All right, get your Bible, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, put your finger there and go to Colossians chapter 3. Ephesians 5, Colossians chapter 3, and uh, we'll read some verses. Uh, Brother Titus, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago called me and, and, uh, and asked me to deal with this subject, and I hadn't, I hadn't really uh, dealt with it in detail uh, like I'm going to do today in a long time. And, uh, uh, but I started looking back over it, praying over it, looking at it. And, uh, you know, the Bible and uh, what he asked me to talk about this morning or this afternoon is what kind of music should we be listening to or, or uh, is our music important, the type of music that we listen to. Right. And uh, I think the preaching, maybe this morning, somebody alluded to music and been careful, maybe even last night, what kind of music we listen to. And, and the Bible has a lot to say about music. And when I started studying this and looking over this, I, I looked at some other presentations and uh, some good men showed uh, slide presentations and things of that nature. And uh, those things are good. Uh, but the Bible says enough about music. We don't have to, we can just stay inside the, inside the confines of the Word of God and uh, find out what the Word of God teaches us about the type of music we should listen to. And if we're to stay in the confines of this book, we'll be all right. Amen. And so what we're going to do this afternoon, God will help us. We're going to take a Bible and talk to you about uh, music and why our music is so important and uh, the, the type that we need to be listening to. Okay. So in Ephesians chapter number 9, or 5, excuse me, chapter number 5, verse number 19, uh, Ephesians chapter number 5, in verse number 19, let's catch 18. Let's, let's, let's read verse 18. The Bible said in Ephesians 5, verse 18, Be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another, in the fear of God. All right, go to the book of Colossians there. Colossians chapter 3. We'll catch two verses here and uh, look at some things. Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 15. Colossians 3 and verse 15. The Bible said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And that's as far as we'll read, but keep those two places handy. We'll be referencing back and forth. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, God, for the privilege and to be able to stand and open the Word of God one more time. Lord, I pray you'd help us. God, as we endeavor to teach on this subject, Lord, I recognize that God, we can't, Lord, even uh, attempt to teach or preach or bring out any truth out of the Word of God without your help. Lord, I'm trusting you and looking to you for help. I'm asking you to touch us now in Jesus' name. Lord, illuminate our hearts and our minds, Father. Lord, reveal truth to us today, Father, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, and uh, we're going to talk about music, and, and, and really ever since I got saved, um, I got to say, let me just say this before I get into this. Uh, I was not raised, uh, and I think I mentioned it last night, I was not really raised in church, and I was not raised around the Bible or the things of God. In the old-time way, I didn't know anything about it. As a matter of fact, uh, when, I, when I was 21 years old, a man came to me and started witnessing to me and brought the, started bringing the gospel to me and telling me if I died, asked me if I died right now, if I'd go to heaven or hell. And uh, God began to deal with my heart. And he kept witnessing to me, and uh, him and a couple other men that I worked with had got together and went and bought me a Bible. And he gave it to me, and he said, this is a King James Bible. He said, that's all you'll ever need. And I had no clue what he's talking about. I didn't know there's other versions of the Bible. I, didn't, I just thought the Bible was a Bible. I had no clue about anything. I had no clue about uh, uh, the things that many of y'all have been taught your whole life. I had no clue about those things. And uh, God saved me. I was, I'll was just be honest with you this evening. I was rough around the edges. I mean, I just, uh, God saved me from my life of sin. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. But um, 
uh, but when God saved me, I still listened to a lot of worldly music. And uh, my pastor one day, or one Sunday afternoon, was preaching, and he made the statement. He said, any music you listen to that does not glorify God uh, is not fit to listen to. Amen. And I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think a whole lot about it. The next morning, I was going to work, and I was listening to some uh, country music. Just to be honest, what I was listening to. And uh, God the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart, and he said, that does not glorify God. And I took it out, and uh, and it so, so happened, uh, my uncle had gave me a lot of, just give me a, a shoebox, back before CDs, and MP3 players and all that, give me a shoebox of, of cassette tapes, uh, and I just started this uh, primitive chord, this some old godly singing, and I started listening to that singing. And uh, so God put my heart a long time ago, uh, uh, just took that desire to listen to the, to, to the music of the world. And, uh, and so ever since then, the type of music that we listen to has kind of been a pet peeve of mine. I just think uh, I realize how much control, and I'm going to get into some more of that in just a moment, but I realize how much control how that music has on us, how much influence right. the type of music we listen to has on us. As a matter of fact, um, I go to the public school a lot and uh, t uh, talk to the seventh and eighth grade and do character lessons. And uh, one of the principal a few years ago made this statement. He said, I do not know why we don't, we don't use music to teach young people. He said, because you can listen to a song a few times and hear the tone of it, hear the beat of it, and get it stuck in your head, and 20 years later, you can still remember it. Right. He may say, I don't know why we don't use that as a tool to teach with. And uh, man, that just uh, that made me realize just how powerful music was. And there's a reason for that. And you can find the reason for that in the Word of God. And we're going to look at I want you to notice a few things about this, and we'll talk about music this scene. Now, first of all, I want you to notice the conception. Now, we'll get to our text in just a moment, but notice the conception of music. Uh, listen, music had its origin in heaven. It was created for worship, and it was never, and you study the Word of God, it was never used for entertainment. Right. The purpose of music, when it was, listen, when God, music is something God ordained, something God created in the heavens before yes. he ever created the earth. Right. God created music. Right. And he done that not to entertain you and I, but the purpose of music was for worship. Amen. Right. We'll find, listen, that, that uh, uh, in Job 38, verses 6 through 7, the Bible said, Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, who laid the cornerstone thereof when the morning stars sang together and all the sons shouted for, for glory. And so the Bible teaches us that when God made the world, when God created the world, the heavens sang of the glory of God. Right. And so we see that music and singing uh, was something that was, was conceived in heaven. It was created by God for the purpose to worship him. Amen. That's, that's the purpose of it, the sole purpose of it. Uh, we, we understand that God created man in his own image to be an instrument of praise. That's the purpose that we're made for, to bring honor and glory to God, amen, and to worship him, and uh, that's the image. Uh, he gave humans the ability to sing and to make music with musical instruments to complement the voice. Hey, listen, the Lord inv invented musical instruments. Right. You'll find them in heaven. I mean, you, all the way through the Word of God, they're worshiping, they're singing, they're playing instruments uh, in heaven. Amen? As you study this Bible, you'll find the word sing mentioned 102 times in the King James Bible. The word song is mentioned 74 times in the King James Bible. And so we understand that music and singing and worship was invented by God. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm chapter number 40 and uh, verse number 3, He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praised our God, and many shall see it and fear and trust the Lord. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Uh, Psalm 28 and 7 said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and, and with my song I will praise him. Second Chronicles 5.13 said, It came to pass, as the trumpeteers and singers were as one to make 
one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. And so, simply, let me say it again. We understand that music started in heaven. Amen. God, God ordained it. God created it. Music and singing was not something that was created by man for man's entertainment, but it was created by God for his worship. And so we understand the conception of music. But look in our text. I want you to notice the content of music. Well, if we understand that music comes for God, God's got a purpose for it, God created it for him and for his glory, for his worship, then he also gives us in the word of God uh, the type of content or uh, uh, listen, how our music, how it needs to be, amen? The lyrics, he tells us clearly in the word of God what the lyrics should be made of. He tells us clearly in, clearly in the word of God how the beat or the tone should be. And we'll find that in the scriptures. And so uh, we'll find the content of music. Notice in our text, all right? By content, we're talking about what's written in the song. This is the song itself. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 19. Notice, notice what your Bible said in verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in hymns. Let me stop and say this. It's amazing the context of verse number 19 follows verse number 18. And, uh, and uh, Brother Renshaw mentioned it this morning. He said, how the Bible said, Thou be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Amen. And the comparison there is that wine controls people. It controls their mind. It controls their actions. Amen. And we're not to be controlled with a substance or controlled with anything, but we're to be controlled or filled with the Spirit of God. And the next verse said, Speak unto yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so, listen, uh, being filled with the Spirit does have a connection with music. Right. And we find that. That's in the context here. Speaking to yourselves in, hymns, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and uh, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. And notice here some things about our content. There in Colossians, it says this. It says again, he said, uh, We're to teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Psalm 105 2 says this, Sing unto him, sing psalms unto, unto him. Talk ye of all of his, uh, his wondrous works. You know, if you, you, when you study the Bible, you understand uh, this scene that the Psalms, in, in your Bible, the Psalms were songs. Right. Amen. They were meant to be sung. They were songs, and that was the purpose of them. And so that, the book of Psalms is a hymn book. That's what it is. It's a hymn book. And they sung those songs. You can look at the book of the uh, Psalms and look at the songs of the Greeks. And as they, they sung those songs, as they journeyed to Jerusalem and prepared for the Passover. And so, uh, but notice here, real quickly, notice the content of our, our music. First of all, let me say this, that our music, the type of music we need to listen to or sing or, or, or uh, be influenced by needs to be scriptural. Needs to be scriptural. Amen. The Bible said, speak to yourselves in what? Psalms. What psalms? That's the scriptures. Right. And I've already said that was songs, amen? Right. And so what's the, what's the writer, the apostle Paul saying in Ephesians? He's saying that our music needs to be scriptural and it needs to be based on scriptural principles, amen? amen. Any music that is, that is, that is outside, the, outside the confines of the word of God right. is not fit to listen to. Amen. Any music that is outside the confines of what the scriptures, what the word of God teaches, is not something a child of God needs to be listened to. Why? Because it is not scriptural. It is not lined up with what thus saith the word of God. Hey, listen, can I, can I make this statement? And don't uh, think I'm being ugly, but it's hypocritical for us to uh, listen, desire to serve God, but yet listen to music that promotes unscriptural living. Amen. Amen. And so our music needs to be scriptural, amen. And, and again, many times we're to sing psalms unto the Lord. We're, and, and you'll find that phrase mentioned over and over and over in the Word of God. So we find it needs to be scriptural, amen. Right. And not only it needs to be scriptural, but I'm going to say this, 
It needs to be sacred. And, and there in Colossians 3 and 16, the Bible said, let, you, let the word of Christ dwell in, your, in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and modest one another in psalms and hymns and, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Notice that. And so the Bible says here, not only in Ephesians, that, that, word, that our, our, our songs are to be psalms or to be scriptural, but here we find he said in Colossians, he said they'd be psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Amen. So what's a hymn? What is a hymn? We got a hymn book. What's that word hymn mean? Uh, listen, there seems to be a lot of confusion of what hymns are in this day and time. Isn't that right? Uh, listen, but hymns are, are they're, they're, hymns used to be understood to be music appropriate to be played and sung in church. Rich, majestic music in words and sound that glorify God. What about that? Let me read that again. Listen, music appropriate to be played and sung in church. Rich, majestic music in words and sound that glorify God. Amen. And so a, a hymn is a song that is, <coughs> excuse me, that is sanctified that is set apart for a purpose, and that purpose is to bring honor and glory unto God. Amen. Uh, it, it, listen, it, it is, it is a, 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 separated, uh, a, a separated song or a music that's set apart to bring glory to God. Amen. Now, I'll tell you what that does. Uh, that disqualifies all the music of the world. You can't, there's not a country music song, there's not a rock song, there's none of that can be considered a, a, a hymn, amen? Yes, Why is that? Because they're not sacred, they're not set apart for the purpose to be sung in the house of God to worship the Creator, amen? amen. And so all that can be disqualified. But I'll tell you something that's be disqualified under that is some of this contemporary stuff that's going on, Amen. Because let me read that again. He said, music appropriate to be played and sung in church. Rich, majestic music and words and sound that glorify God. Amen. Right. A lot of this contemporary music going on does not glorify God, but it glorifies the flesh. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, they, use the, they use the beat of the world. The beat, of, they use the same beat of rock music. And they combine, they will try to combine it with so-called Christian lyrics, right. but I'm going to tell you that music is not sacred and set apart because you can't combine the world yes, and the sir. things of God, friend, and use them for worship because God demands his people to be a separate people. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. So we find that it's sacred. That our, our, our songs should be scriptural. Amen. Amen. It should be based out of the word of God. They should be sacred, but notice not only that, they should be spiritual. Colossians 3, 16, he said, uh, in the latter part, he said, psalms and hymns and what? Spiritual songs. So there will be spiritual. What is spiritual songs? For that, we must go to the Bible to define what spiritual is. Amen. Right. To find out what he means by spiritual songs, well, we've got to find out what he means to be spiritual. The Bible said in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In the same chapter in verse number one, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. In verse five, the Bible says in, in, in Romans 8, the Bible says in verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of of the spirit. Amen. And so the Bible clearly teaches us there's a warfare between the flesh and the spirit. We talked about the flesh a little bit last night. Amen. And so what, are the, what is the flesh? The Bible said in Galatians 5, 19, the works of the flesh are, are manifest, manifest, which are these. Now listen, these are the works of the flesh, which are manifest. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. So what is those things we just read in Galatians 5, 
19 through 21. That's the works of the flesh. Right. So to be a spiritual song would have to be defined as a song that does not promote the works of the flesh. Yes, sir. Is that not right? Yes, sir. A spiritual song would be a song that promotes a, the fruit of the Spirit and not the works of the flesh. Right. And the works of the flesh are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. But the Bible said now that our songs, no matter child of God, that the songs we sing, right. the music we listen to uh, should be spiritual. So music that promotes these things, these work of the flesh, would be disqualified under what the Bible teaches that you and I should be listening to. Amen. Amen. Hey, some people say, why do you preach again rock music? Why do you preach again country music? Why do you preach it? Why? I'll tell you why. What, does they, what do they promote? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lascivious. All you got to do, friend, is listen. If you, if, you listen to, uh, uh, if you listen to more than one or two country songs, I promise you they're going to promote drunkenness and fornication and lasciviousness and, and seditions and strife and wrath. wrath. Amen. Those things, will put, they're, they're promoted in the music of the world. Right. And so a uh, spiritual song is that that promotes spiritual things, not, flat, not, not stuff of the flesh. Amen. Hey, this, th this stuff is important. This stuff is important. Amen. And so we see the content of music. But notice, notice this. Notice the control of music. And this is probably where I want to get, where I want to, get to. Notice the control. Of music. The Bible said there in, in, in Ephesians 5, again, verse 19, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. And so we find here that, uh, again, the Bible said in Romans 8, we are to sing spiritual songs. Why is that? Romans 8 says this. Uh, in, chapter, in verse number 6, I read a moment ago. Let me read again. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is peace. Spiritually minded is peace. Amen. Uh, so here's the question that we have. If, if spiritually, spiritual things promote, produces peace, what does fleshly things promote? Right. Amen. Turmoil, trouble, right. hardship. And, and so, those so here's the question we got to ask ourselves. Does our music that we listen to, does it produce peace in our heart? Amen. Does it produce peace? Because, right. uh, listen, to be carnally minded is dead. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a spiritual song that promotes spirituality will produce peace. Amen. They spent a lot of times in my walk with God where I've just been going through a hard time and, and uh, man, just not, not have no peace, just troubled and burdened down and I can put on a, a, a song and they'll start uh, singing about the goodness of God and singing about, listen, the Savior and the Lord Jesus and it don't take me long, the Holy Ghost will show up and he'll bring peace for peace will flood, right. flood my soul through the song and the music that worship God. Amen. Amen. And so our music... He, it, 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 uh, it produces peace. Listen, listen to this statement. I'm talking about, do you realize, and a lot of people don't realize, music has control over us. Amen. Yes, it does. Music, you say, preacher, you don't have any control over me. Anybody ever heard of Merlin Manson? Merlin Manson is a, is a, a rock singer and uh, one of the most wicked individuals ever walked the planet. And uh, he, he made this statement. He said, this is what he said. He's a, a, a uh, and I'll, I'll tell you some more about him in just a moment. But he said this. He said, music is the strongest form of magic. So that's, what, that's what Merlin Manson said, the, the rock singer. He said, music is the strongest form of magic. This ain't what a preacher said. It's what a rock, it's what a rock star right. said. He said, music. John Denver, probably some of you never heard of him. Uh, listen, he said this. He said, rock music is a greater influence over the souls of men than primitive Christianity. That's what another worldly music artist said. Rock music is a greater influence over the souls of men than primitive Christianity. That Merlin Manson that I mentioned a moment ago, Merlin Manson, listen, he, he, I've seen videos in his concerts where he'll, he'll put a pulpit on his stage. And he'll come up with a Bible and he'll begin to rip the pages out of the Bible and wad them up and throw them in the congregation and in the crowd that's there at the, 
at his concert. That's Merlin Manson. He said that music is the strongest form of, ma of, of magic. It's controlling. Right. Listen to this. The West Side Middle School massacre, massacre was a school shooting that occurred in March 24, not, not March 24, 1998, in West Side Middle School in Uncorporated Craighead County, Arkansas. A total of five people, four female students, and a teacher were killed. Ten people, nine students, and one teacher were injured. The perpetrators of this shooting were two students. Listen to this. A 13-year-old and 11-year-old who were shooting in ambush style from the woods in camouflage clothes. They said that two hours before the shooting, they were listening to us to Bone Thugs and Harmony, a rap group, and a song called More Murder, Mo Murder. Over and over again, the song, they listened to that song. As a matter of fact, they said this, that they listened to that song for two hours before they went. They'd been planning the shooting, and when they, 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 had, well, they were about to, to back out, and they put on this song by Bone Thugs and Harmony called More Mo Murder, and they listened to it for over two hours, over and over and over and over again, until they psyched themselves up to go and shoot, mow down a bunch of people at a high school. Right. In a study, now listen to this. In a study, uh, Ralph D. Clemente, Ph.D. of Emory University's Rowland School of Public Health, March 3rd, 2000. I'm talking about music being controlled. Right. Teens who spent more time, listen to this, teens who spent more time watching the sex and violence depicted in real life of the gangster rap music videos are more likely to practice these behaviors in real life. That's a study by Emory University. Right. That teenagers who watch sex and violence depicted in real life of gangster rap music videos are more likely to practice these behaviors in real life suggests one of the first studies to specifically explore how rap videos influence emotional and physical life. After studying 522 girls between the age of 14 and 18 from non-urban, lower social economic neighborhoods, researchers found that compared to those who never or rarely watch these videos, the girls who v viewed these rap videos were at least for at least 14 hours a week, now this is a study by a university, were far more likely to practice numerous destructive behaviors over the course of one, oh, over the course of a one year study, they, they were, listen to this, three times more likely to hit a teacher. Two and a half more times more likely to get, to get arrested. Twice as likely to have multiple sexual partners, one and a half times more likely to get sexually transmitted disease, use drugs or drink alcohol. That is a study by Emory University that says that music changes the behavior of teenagers. Right. And then what this preacher says, right. I didn't want the, that's, what, that's what Emory University says, right. amen? <clears throat> Listen to this. Of course, this isn't the first time that rebellious music has been blamed for society's ills. From Elvis to Columbine, the songs of music obsessed youth have often been blamed for antisocial behavior. But Ralph, in, in, the, in particular, the, the especially violent and sexually explicit gangster variety has raised special concerns. The Columbine shooting, has anybody ever heard of the Columbine shooting? Some of y'all, that's happened several years ago now. Uh, there was uh, some young men went to high school and uh, shot several, several people at Columbine High School. And... Uh, their favorite artist was Merlin Manson. The ultimate slap in the face from Merlin Manson himself, listen to this. He held a concert just outside of where the Columbine High School massacre took place in honor of the two maniac killers. Merlin Manson, these, 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 uh, the, the, these killers went in this high school and started killing people at random and shooting people and Merlin Manson had a, 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 a concert there at, at outside of Columbine High School sometime later after it happened and honored the two killers. This is what he said. Manson said he was sick of hearing about Christians 
like Cassie Burnell and Rachel Scott who died at Columbine. He said the true heroes were Klebold and Harris who killed all the kids. That's what, that's what Marlon Manson said about the shooting. But see, here's the thing about it. That's the type of, when you listen to this kind of worldly music, that's the kind of stuff you're letting feed your mind right. and feed your soul. Yes, and it's controlling, amen? Yes, hey, it's controlling. It'll produce right. peace or it produces, and so it should be peaceful. Amen? Then notice this in Ephesians 5, 19 again. I'm trying to hurry through this. Once again, the Bible said here, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. According to Webster, the word melody means harmony, a sweet, agreeable sound, an organized tone. Now, they tell me, I don't know much about uh, music, but they tell me rock music does not meet the standard that God has laid down for music. There is often no melody in rock music, no harmony, no sweet and agreeable and organized tone. Amen. So it should be pleasant. Should be pure. Amen. Ephesians 5 19, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Can you listen to the Lord? Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Here's the question Can the music we listen to or we sing, can we sing it to the Lord? Right. right. Yes. That's just pretty simple right there. Amen. Yes, sir. Right. I mean, if we just, if we just line every bit right. of it with that standard, could we sing it to the Lord? Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that would, uh, I tell you what that do, that disqualify all the worldly music. Amen. Amen. So we see, we see not only the conception, the content, but notice the control, but notice the, con the corruption of music. <clears throat> do you know if you study this Bible, I, I said we said there a minute ago that music was, was uh, 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 God created, it, God ordained. But do you know anything God makes, God ordains, the devil's always got a counterfeit. Right. The devil always, always uh, wants to use God's uh, plan and he wants to twist it for his benefit. Right. Amen. And if you study the Bible, you'll find this, that the music that God created for worship of him become corrupted in the word of God. And uh, singing and dancing in Exodus chapter number 32 uh, Aaron and the children of Israel took their ear, golden earrings and melted them down and created a golden calf and set it up and began to worship a false god and a false image. Amen. But you know, you know what you'll find they done in front of that golden image? They sung and danced. Singing and dancing was accompanied with the worship of the golden calf. Here these are, they're worshiping a false god, a false idol, amen, and they're singing and they're dancing. And so the music that God had designed to worship him had been corrupted and now is being used to worship a strange or a false god. Right. Exodus chapter number 32. Daniel chapter number 3, you remember when Nebuchadnezzar set up the golden image and told them, if they, listen, if they didn't bow down, that they'd be through in the fiery furnace. Y'all remember that story? What happened? Hey, listen, the Bible, he, the Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear the music, amen, he said, when you hear the music, bow. When you hear, when the songs, when the music is played, when the timbrels are played, when the, he said, bow. What's he saying? What, what the, what, what's going on? Listen, he's saying, when you hear the music, worship the false god. And so we see music was corrupted into false worship. Uh, you know, how does that happen? How does something God created for his glory become so corrupted? Um, if you study this Bible, you know what you'll find out? Satan was over the music in heaven before his fall. Amen. So he knows the power and influence that music has and tries to use it for his benefit. Hey, listen, the, the devil was over the music and the worship in heaven before he fell. Right, right, right. The Bible said in Job 38, 
uh, listen, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, Lucifer, listen to this, Lucifer was basically a walking, talking musical instrument. Ezekiel chapter number 28, verse number 13, the Bible said, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Ever precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, the, and the diamond, and the beryl, and the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold, and the workmanship of thy timbrels and of thy pipes was prepared in the day that thou was created. What about that? The workmanship of thy timbrels and of thy pipes was, create, was prepared in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub, cherub that covereth, and I've set thee so, and thou, hast, and thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of the merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. You know what Satan was before he fell, before God cast him out? God had him. He was over the music. Hey, Amen. That's what he, I see. That was his position in heaven. He was over the music. He was over the worship. He was over the instruments. He was an instrument. Amen. And so when he cast out, he got lifted up with pride and he cast out. If he was over the music then, right. If he was over the worship with music and singing then, amen, yes, now he is the ruler of this world, amen, right. the prince and the power of the air. Right. And he's controlling the music. He's over the music of the world that's going on now. Right, sir. Amen. amen. <clears throat> All you got to do, listen, it's as simple as this. All you got, I mean, really, if you start looking at the lyrics, and we talked about the lyrics there. You start looking at the lyrics and, 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 and the worldly music and what some of the, you know, years ago, back in the 70s and during that time, people would talk about rock music and worldly music and corrupted music and they would do what they called backward masking. In other words, they would, they would play these songs and they would play them backwards. Right. And they would, when they would play them backwards, they would have a hidden message in it. Amen. But they was Several songs. I remember hearing, I've heard several songs like that back then. They'd play them backward, Brother Titus, and they would have a hidden message in it. Yes, sir. Amen. But um, now, in this day, they don't have to hide messages. Right. That's, right. That's right. They don't even try to hide messages. Right. Right. Amen. Matter of fact, there's more, there's more wickedness, there's more ungodliness. There's more blasphemy in the music of the day than any time, any time in history. Right. I was just doing some research last night, and uh, um, I've done this last year. Last year, I had all seventh and eighth graders uh, in, our, in our school, and at the last day of school, I had them, I had all of them take a piece of paper and write their favorite song and their favorite music group or music artist on the back of that paper, and I took them up at the end of class. And I looked all, I looked at all of them. And the number one of them, I said, the number one artist was a group called DMCE. Now DMCE lead singer is Joe Jonas. Joe Jonas, of course the Jonas Brothers, started out on the Disney Channel. And when they done that, they were open Christians. They were. And all of those Jonas brothers wore purity rings and promoted their Christianity. That, but Joe Jonas is now the lead singer of a group called DMCE. And their music is some of the most vile and wretched I looked up the lyrics last night, Brother Titus. I, would, I could not even quote to you the lyrics in that song, in those songs. Amen. They're two top hit songs. 
the number one song last year in the seventh and eighth grade was Kate by the Ocean. It, promo it promotes fornication and adultery. That is the theme of the entire song. Right. Amen. Here is a so-called professing Christian that is promoting fornication. Right. Amen. Another one of the real popular was a, was a singer by the name of Eminem. Not the candy, neither. Amen. Eminem, he, he's, in, he's the best-selling artist of the 2000s. Uh, listen to this song. He's got a song called Role Model. Listen to the lyrics. He said, follow me and do exactly what the song says. Smoke weed, take pills, drop out of school, kill people and drink. Jump behind the wheel like it was still legal. I'm dumb enough to walk in the store and steal. Die from an overdose, dig myself out of my grave. And this is how I'm supposed to teach kids how to behave. Now follow me and do exactly what you see. Don't you want to grow up and be just like me? I slap women, eat shrooms, and OD. Now don't you want to grow up and be just like me? That's one of the most popular singers going on right now. Kid Rock has got a song called Rock and Roll Jesus. Testify, it's a rock revival. Don't need a suit, you don't need a Bible. Get up and dance, I'm going to set you free. Testify, it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. A soul sense of sensation that you can't control. Does that sound like that's godly? No, oh, no. no sir. See, here's the thing about it. People, a lot of young people listen to this music and it's got a beat that gets a hold of that beat will get a hold of it. Right. And you can't even understand what the lyrics are really saying. But when you stop and examine it and look at it, friend, you see the blasphemy and ungodliness, how yeah. that's in it. Amen. This, uh, this singer here, she's real popular right now. I, 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 I know her name is not pronounced. It looks like Keisha, but it ain't how it's pronounced. It's Kesha, is that right? Somebody help me. Anybody know it? Is that right? Kesha, is that right? She got a new song out called Him. Now, what about that? We just talked about hymns. She got a new song out called Him. This is, here's the lyrics. This is a hymn for the hymnless, kids with no religion. Yea, we keep on sinning. Yea, we keep on singing. Flying down the highway, the back seat of a Honda. Pull to the front, let it run. We don't ballet. Sorry if you're starstruck. Blame it on the stardust. You know I'm not perfect. A bunch of curse words. Him for the hymnless. We don't need no forgiveness. Because if there's a heaven, don't care if we get in. That's one of the most popular singers right now. Got songs flying up the billboard charts. What about, what about country music? Amen. Amen. What about country music? Kenny Chesty's got a song called Te You and Tequila. You and Tequila make me crazy. Run like poison in my blood. One more night could kill me. One is too many. One more is never enough. Never enough. You and Tequila. You got another one right now on the billboard charts called All the Pretty Girls. All, it, here's the lyrics. All the sheriffs said, kid, you better slow down. Listen, all the preachers said it's the devil's playground. I wonder if they knew that they were wasting their bread. All they ever heard was all the pretty girls say it. I hate that garbage. Uh, yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. Listen to that junk. And, and what they're saying, they're saying the man of God is wasting his breath. And you don't need to be listening to the man of God. And you pump that garbage in your yes. mind, friend. He will control your life. Yes. Amen. 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 Listen here. Midland, there's a group called Midland. They got a song out now called Drinking Problem. One more night, one more down, one more round, one more round. First one in, last one out. Giving this town lots to talk about. They don't know what they don't know. People say, I've got a drinking problem. There ain't no reason to stop. People saying, I've hit rock bottom just because I'm living on the rocks. It's a broken-hearted thinking problem. So pull the bottle off the wall. People say, I've got a drinking problem, but I don't got, a, I, I don't got no problem drinking at all. 
I believe the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5, 11, be, but now I've written unto you not to keep company, if any man, that, not to keep company. Right. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covenant, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, and such a one, no, uh, no, such a, and one, no, not to eat. Amen. The Bible said not to even keep company if somebody claims to be a brother that's a drunkard and a fornicator and a covetous and an idolater. That's what the Word of God says. And I'll tell you what, that, that crowd, especially the country music crowd, they want to act all religious. Right. Amen. He'll put out the gospel CDs and Christmas time. They want to sing their right. Christmas CDs that exalts the Savior and talk about, oh, how we love Jesus, but then sing about drinking and fornication right. and adultery. Right. The Bible said that crowd that claims to be a brother and that promotes adultery and fornication and the sin, he said, yep. don't even keep company with that crowd. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Selena Gomez, that's another Disney. She got one that says, Preacher, man walked in the bar and he said, Hey, girl, can't you walk a mile straight? Father, I'm torn. I'm selling my soul to the rhythm and the beat of the bass because I, can, I can't confess my rock and roll ways because I'm so possessed with the music, the music he plays. What about that? What about Katy Perry? She's a real popular one right now. She got one called I Kissed a Girl and I liked it. I taste I taste of her cherry chapstick. I kissed a girl just to try it. Hope my boyfriend don't mind it. I felt so wrong. It felt so right. Don't be mean I'm in love tonight. I kissed a girl and I like it. I liked it. You know what the Bible teaches? The Bible teaches Sodom is an abomination yes, in the sight of Almighty yes, God. Amen. Yes, and here is a lady that's singing about sodomy and, uh, listen, promoting sodomy and promoting that lifestyle, friend. And I'm telling you what they did. They put her in the halftime of the Super Bowl and put her on stage and she sung that garbage and everybody uh, lifted her up and talked about how, how great job she did. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. That music is out of hell today. Amen. Yes, yes. Lady Gaga, what about her? I, I'm, I'm all right on time. Yes, sir, you're running away. Well. Lady Gaga, listen to this. She come out with a song a couple years ago named Judas. She's, it's what, this is, it's, it's, listen, I'm just a holy fool, fool, oh baby, he's so cruel. But I'm still in love with Judas, baby. I'm just a holy fool, oh baby, he's so cruel. But I'm still in love with Judas. Let's see, I couldn't love a man so purely. Even prophets forgave his crooked ways. I've learned love is like a brick. You can build a house or sink a dead body. I see. I'm, I'm just a holy fool. Let's see. I'm just a holy fool. He's so cruel. Let me skip on down here. In the most biblical sense, I'm beyond repentance. Hmm. I want to love you, but something's pulling me away from you. Jesus is my virtue, but Judas is the demon I cling to. That's, 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 that's the stuff you, when you feed your mind. You think, it, it controls you. Hey, listen, and another, one of the big popular ones when I done the study last year was, was a rapper by the name of Eminem. Or not Eminem, I said that. A rapper by the name of Little Wayne. Little Wayne. I looked up lyrics by Little Wayne. I'll be honest with you. Is is it, it was curse words ever sentence. I couldn't even get none of his lyrics to quote. Ever sentence. Curse words. Ever sentence. It's the whole song. It's just curse words. Everyone looked up, just curse words. Amen. Spiritual songs. Sacred songs. Right. Scriptural songs. Right. Amen. Filth Harmony, on the top billboard charts right now, pop music, got a song, he liked that. Promotes fornication, DNCE, I missed that. Uh, a group on the pop charts now called Machine Gun Kelly, got a song called Bad Things, promotes fornication. Listen, Madonna sings and promotes Satanism, lesbianism, and every ungodly deed you can imagine. Her concert, she has been known to come out on a, on a crucifix, mocking Christ, and she openly hates Christianity and God. That's the worldly music. And people wonder why we preach against this stuff. 
There's a reason we say, you better be careful with music in this. Right. Amen. And, they, and they, you, there, there's a reason we say, hey, you don't need to be a, taking that stuff in. You don't need to be a feeding on that stuff. Right. Amen. Yes. You don't need to be a feeding the flesh when that, with, with this, this, these, these people that, that defy the God we serve and defy the God of this Bible and blaspheme the God of this Bible and now sing about it open. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I don't want that garbage. I don't, that, I don't even want that garbage in my, my home. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, friend, you know, years ago when I was growing up, mom and daddy could come in my, they could come in my uh, bedroom and they could look through my CDs and see what I was listening to. But now everybody's got their music on their phone. Yes, right. Amen. And a lot of parents don't even know how to turn them on or how to look and see what you got. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you something, friend. This, hey, if you've got a bunch of garbage on there, if you've got a bunch of rock music, and you've got a bunch of country music, and you've got a bunch of music, don't glorify God. I thought you ought to do. You need to get off of there. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Listen, yeah, get man. that right with God. If you're on the blood, yeah. you separate from it, and get you some good godly songs that promote, promote spirituality, and pro listen to that as scriptural, and uh, listen to them, and quit listening to the field of Yes, sir. Hey. Amen. Hey. That's right. Hey. This is, I mean, and I could go on and on and on. I mean, I, I could talk, I mean, stuff, I could talk about this stuff for hours. The corruption that's in it. The control that's in it. Amen. That's why it's so important. Somebody say this, and I'm done right now. Be careful. Don't get, don't get, I'm going to tell you something. You know what that stuff does? It pleases the flesh. Right. It sounds good. It's got a good beat to it. Amen. And it draws you in. Draws you in. Amen. Remember years ago, I'd just gotten saved, and I told you I'd just rough around the edges, and, and uh, I was, man, I was, I mean, I just loved music of all kinds. Right. I did. I loved it. I loved any kind. It didn't matter. Rock, country, it didn't matter what it was, except for Ralph. I'm a hangbody. Amen. 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 I'm a hangbody. Anybody ever listen to that song? Somebody say amen. And, uh, and so uh, I, I was just trying to get to church, just trying to learn about God, serve God. And there was a country artist come out with some home and he was singing about a homeless man that, that turned to God and his life turned around. And I said, man, that's pretty good. I like that. So I went and bought the CD. And on the other side, he was, he was singing about a homeless man turning his life to God. And, and two or three songs later, he's singing about uh, going to a bar and drinking pina coladas. You know, the Bible says, the Bible says an unstable, uh, uh, listen, a wavering man is unstable in all his ways. Right. That's where they'll suck in. That's where they'll get a hold of it. They'll, they'll, they'll appear. Yes, Come and angel appear to be good people or, or they'll even do, uh, you know, works and, 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 and they, they look like they're good people. Amen. But yet they're, 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 they'll pull you in that way and then they'll feed your mind with garbage, feed your mind with rebellion, right. feed your mind with all this. And you know what it does? It, 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 it sets a desire and a seed in your heart for them things. Yes, sir. That's what it does. Amen. That's what it does. Yes, sir. You know, you know, what, you know what? You go to a bar, you know what bars play? You know what they play? They play sad music. Yeah. That's what they play. And it's slower. They play. They like to play more slower music, and sadder. You know. And, and, and if it ain't slower and sadder music, then they play music that talks about drinking. Right. You know why? Because they sell more alcohol. Right. That's just proven fact. Yes. Amen. Hey, listen. Why do you when you go to a Mexican restaurant? What kind of music they play? <laughs> Amen. Why is that? Because they're setting a the mood. That's right. It's a mood setter. Yes, sir. You're in a Mexican restaurant. They're going to play that type of music because they're setting a mood. Yes, sir. You ain't Mexico. Amen. Amen. You ain't Mexico. But what they're trying to do is set a mood and make you feel like you're in Mexico. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. And listen, some of my stuff, some of my stuff, ACDC. Amen. I'm on a highway to hell. God have mercy. Amen. Stuff is wicked. Amen. Be careful. 
that you don't get sucked in. Say, what I need to sing, what I need to listen to, preacher? Hey, you need to listen to scriptural songs. Right. Spiritual songs. Right. Sacred songs. Making melody in your heart as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen, brother. Come on.